London's top art auction houses, they are wrapping up sales tomorrow. We have Kelly Crow here with us. She's joining us from London, our in our WSJ Bureau, to tell us who the clear winner is. I'm gonna have a little drum roll here, Kelly. Who is it? Yeah, I'm feeling a little patriotic, actually, <laughs> because uh, for the first time in the last few seasons, Americans are really dominating these sales, um, both as sellers and as buyers. They're really um, showing up the Europeans who usually, you know, usually bid more and buy more in these sort of hometown sales here in London. Before we delve into what's been selling uh, and the prices they've been going at, very quickly, is this a sign that, that, at least in the art market, they feel the economy in America is shifting toward the more positive side, or at least that it's a lot better than it is over in Europe? Absolutely. What I'm feeling, what I'm hearing is that Americans just feel a little bit further down the road on, you know, the road to recovery than some Europeans here. And so they feel a little more confident to bid. And um, also the, the dollar has been a little stronger against the pound than usual. And so there are many collectors who are just capitalizing on the chance, you know, to get something um, perhaps at, you know, a little bit uh, less of a markup than they're used to here in London. All right. So what are the Yanks buying? Okay, so memorize one name, Gerhard Richter. This German painter um, is known for painting these really lush abstracts by uh, scraping a big squeegee across the canvas. It creates this really sort of mottled, layered look, and um, they look great over the sofa, they look great in museums, and um, pretty much everyone seems to be buying them. Four of Sotheby's top five priciest pictures in its sale last night were by this man and, and one sold for as much as 15 million dollars so he's definitely an artist to watch. Is, I, I love that painting. Is abstract, is that one of the hottest trends right now that you have seen in London, Kelly? Well, you're definitely seeing a lot of color because uh, Christie's also did well with a Francis Bacon that, that basically looked like a Valentine. I mean, they sold it on Valentine's and had a bright purple background, lots of red and lush colors. So people have all these homes, right, with um, beige sofas and beige modern look, and these colors just really pop off the wall. So they really want power paintings. Um, they don't want subtle works works on paper. Lucien Freud did pretty well with a series of drawings this year, but um, it definitely when we're talking in the close to $10 million range, it's it's basically going to look, you know, like a bouquet on canvas. It's yeah. really going to really gonna jump out at you. Interesting. Pow power paintings. I like that. I wonder mm. if you saw any power plays in the bidding. Were there a lot of bidding wars between the Americans and the Europeans uh, and, and other folks as well? Yeah, I mean, that's not to say that Europeans weren't participating. And particularly, there's a painter named Christopher Wool who has always been a real favorite in the States, and he hasn't always done really well here. Suddenly, the light's gone on, and Europeans can't get enough of him. He's known for painting these um, big black letters uh, on white canvases. They sort of look like stencils. In this case, it's sort of a fun punchline because a European uh, paid a little over $7 million for one in which Christopher Wool had written the words fool. So, you know, um, I guess beauty's in the behind of the beholder, but, <laughs> but someone took home a, you know, a $7 million fool this week, which is great for Christopher Wool. And before we let you go, what about Francis Bacon, Kelly? Yeah, Francis Bacon again. Um, New York real estate developer Sheldon Solo was was the big seller of these sales, and he offered up that picture, uh, which ended up selling for uh, thirty three point four million dollars. So uh, a nice chunk of change. He bought it in the early eighties. He also sold a Miro, um, which also sold for mid twenties. Uh, so um, Bacon continues to be popular, especially here, uh, especially here in London. This is sort of where he's from. Well, we've been seeing color in the uh, New York fashion shows, and now we're seeing color in the London art market. Thanks so much, Kelly Crow, for we're bringing us this We're ready for spring. <laughs> we, are, we are definitely ready for spring, believe that.